Now you may be wondering where I got this spicy show me the receipts sweater and I'll leave a link in the description below. If you want to get one, a lot of people ask where I got them. It supports the channel. The first batch of money went to um, men's shelters for men affected by uh, domestic abuse. And uh, I'm not sure what I'll do with the revenue from the next batch here, but you can get one if you want one. Now, Mark Rosewater might be the most ready to go employee I've ever seen in my life. We've now reached peak Marvel where mm, high ranking members inside Wizards of the Coast are basically attacking its player base, uh, smelling their own farts about just how good of a human they are, while the rest of us plebs just couldn't possibly understand. And I actually didn't see this, and I wanna thank Tara Sophia from uh, Magical Tabletop Girls for sharing uh, what is probably the most cancerous uh, blog talk uh, to date. We have Frexia Things asks, in the ongoing representation efforts by wizards, left-handed midget serial killers born in Croatia named Steve seem to be left out. When is the discrimination going to end? Now, Obvious troll is obvious. We all know this is a joke, but Mark Rosewater cannot possibly miss an opportunity to publicly shame people for having fun or his, you know, the players of his game. This is the same behavior we see with morons in the comic book industry. Uh, just ask the former executive um, director or whatever from IDW who just got fired because his company a comic book company owned by Hasbro's revenue was down 91%, completely unrelated to the <laughs> insane injection in social justice in all their comics, I'm sure. His reply, I know that you're going to mock diversity and inclusion. You're trying to. But I think it comes from an ignorance of what it actually feels to be excluded. Are you fucking kidding me, Mark Rosewater? Every magic player that I've ever met knows exactly what it's like to be excluded. You know, people can be excluded for things other. I know you, Mark, look at the world exclusively through the color of people's skins or their sexual orientation. But over here in reality, you know what was the most exclusionary personal trait when I went to school was? Take a guess, Mark. It was being poor. It had nothing to do with the color of your skin or who you like to have sex with. It was like the poor kid or the nerdy kid. It never had anything to do with people's skin or sexual orientation. Every magic player that played magic in middle school in the 90s knows exactly what it's like to be excluded from mainstream. The early 2000s, anybody who's ever been made fun of for playing this game knows exactly what it's like to be excluded. So you are dead wrong, Mark. You just show exactly how out of touch you are with your own customer base. When you've lived your life in the majority, how, how do you know, Mark, that Phyrexia Things isn't a uh, one-legged amputee Latinx androgynous tree person? You don't know. Did you just assume their gender, Mark? Because that's what it seems like to me. It's easy to take for granted that you yourself, that you see you yourself represented in the products and entertainment that you use. Really? Every, everybody I know that played Magic when I started out played Goblin decks or Burn decks. None of those decks had white fat kids in them. In fact, none of them even had white humans in them. This is a fallacy, Mark, that is not backed up by any level of data, and you're using your gigantic platform to shame your player base. But every time we reach out, and I'm not exaggerating, every time I represent a new segment of people, I get heartfelt messages from them about what it means uh, to see themselves in the game. Bullshit, Mark. Publish them all. I want to see them. Just redact their name. Because as far as I can tell, there's not any fat neckbeards in the game. And there's a shitload of us playing it. 
That entire premise falls apart when you look at the people that play the game. You think there's a lot of people that look like Gideon that play this game? How about the females? A ton of them look like Liliana to you? Not from what I've seen, but apparently when you live in an ivory tower over in Seattle or whatever, you, you don't get a lot of time to get down to the local game store to see who plays your game or get to a GP to shake the hands and rub shoulders with the people that play your game because they look a lot like I do. And there aren't anybody on your cards that look like I do, yet somehow I continue to play your game. How does that work? How do you have 20 million players? The reason Wonder Woman and Black Panther have such cultural touchstones is because it's allowing new groups of people to experience something they've never experienced before. Bullshit. <laughs> Wonder Woman and Black Panther were both mediocre movies at best. They didn't break any molds. Wonder Woman's been around forever. Black Panther's been around for forever. Sure, a bunch of people saw Black Panther, a mediocre movie. That's fine. I hope they enjoyed their time. I saw it. It was mediocre. But how do you explain then the fact that me, a fat white guy with a beard, wanted to go see Black Panther, a movie about basically a black ethno state? I don't understand your logic. See, it applies when you're using it to shame somebody, but doesn't apply in real life, right? Did all the people who wanted to see Black Panther, were they all because it was black? I don't think so. I think most people wanted to see the movie because it's a new Marvel movie and everyone, including every major news outlet, said that it was the best thing since sliced bread. Most of the people that left that movie felt pretty apathetic about it. Pretty meh. It was a meh Marvel movie and everyone knows it. It's easy to mock that when something so basic to your experience that you don't even realize it's a thing you would miss if you didn't have it. But I beg for you to try and see life through other people's perspectives, just as I always talk about how good designers see the game through different players' perspectives. Take, try to take the actions that build up the world and make it a better place for everyone, then tear it down for others to make your world better in comparison. Holy projection much, Batman. That's exactly what you're doing, Mark Rosewater. This person, Frexia Things, asked a joke question about the obvious forced diversity you have in the card game, right? This is the question. Look, Mark, like it or not, you are the figurehead for Magic the Gathering. And these are the questions you pick. You take an obvious troll question and use it to write a four paragraph virtue signal to shame most of the players in your game or to basically uh, prop yourself up. And Tara Sophia correctly identifies it when this is exactly how you see yourself. It is. You see all of us regular folk who play your game and buy your $4 booster pack cards as the plebs, and you're here on your pulpit to show us the way. And the way is, I don't know, eliminating, having, getting rid of too many white folks in your game. I talked to several magic personalities on Twitter over this whole ridiculousness. And let me ask you this simple question. How many white people in your card game is too many? How many green dragons in your game is too many? Do you not have black dragons? How many red goblins are too many? Do you not have enough colors of goblin? How many gay goblins do you have? Uh, how many, how many androgynous spells? I mean, why is the fireballs red when there are blue flames out there? Aren't they feeling excluded? My point is there is literally no statistical evidence that this kind of forced diversity has any positive effect on the game. Despite how many moronic ideologues continue to spit this. And before you get all triggered and dislike the video, point me any example to where this helped like anything. And I will give you a hundred examples where it didn't. How about comic books? How is, how is all that forced diversity working for IDW when their revenue is down 91%? How's all, that, how's all that diversity working for Marvel Comics? Tanking. When, when, the tw when their number one seller isn't selling what 
their number, I'm sorry, the number one seller now isn't selling what the number 10 seller was 10 years ago. And it's not because people don't want diversity. This is a straw man that diversity whores always say. I couldn't care less what color people are in the game. It's just that we all know when you're forcing it. It's obvious when you're forcing it, okay? Like you are right now. And it's obvious when you get on your bully pulpit here to shame somebody from the somebody for asking a joke or for making a joke. Let me give you some real questions, Mark Rosewater, that you're not going to answer. Since you like to use your blogatog to interact with fans, I guess on your own on your own terms. Let me ask you the questions that real players are asking, not your fellow fart sniffers that read your Tumblr blog, okay? You have a few thousand people that read your Tumblr garbage, and you think that's what the voice of the players is. Let me ask you some real questions, Mark Rosewater, head of R&D for Wizards of the Coast. Question one. Now, if you have any balls at all, Mark, if you have any integrity at all, you'll answer these questions on your blog at TOG, right? Question number one, what is going on with cardstock quality and when are you going to fix it? Cardstock quality has been significantly poor for several years now, and the overwhelming majority of players are sick of getting warped cards. When will you fix this? Question two, what say you about abandoning local game stores and selling exclusive product like Modern Masters, Iconic Masters, Unglued or Unstable at big box stores? Question three, how about the negative impact of you literally spending money to hire people to investigate your own customers' social media interactions? Question four, how about the divisive? It doesn't even have to be about right or wrong. It has to be about how it divides your customer base. What positive benefits have you seen, if any, from pushing your ideologies on your fans? How come Wizards of the Coast put out a banner and public posts for International Women's Day, but did nothing last year on International Men's Day? About 85% of your player base. Question six, how come you lie about the female player base? Everybody knows the amount of females that play this game is probably less than 10%. Yet you knowingly lie and overestimate that percentage. I think it's because you use that to garner, fee uh, garner strength for your ridiculous ideological plots. However, I'm just curious why you lie about it. Also... What is the appropriate amount of women to play Magic the Gathering? See, you always say that there aren't enough women. How come you never say there's not enough black people that play Magic, Mark? How come you never talk about that? How come it's only ever about women? What about how come there's not enough Latinos, Peruvians? How come you never talk about that stuff, Mark? I'm curious. I'm curious. What, in your opinion, is the appropriate amount of black females to play Magic the Gathering. What is the correct amount? I want a real answer because clearly there is one in your mind. Here's a fun one. Mark, how come you follow <laughs> Talcum X, Sean King on Twitter, a white man who pretends to be black in order to create faux racism and profit from it? He's a racism whore. How come you follow him on Twitter? It seems like a weird follow. That's just kind of an off off the arm. You could I would love to see you, Mark, answer all these questions on your next blog talk. So instead of taking these troll questions that make you feel good to smell your own farts, why don't you answer some real questions from real magic players? I don't often I almost never would call for anyone to be fired. In fact, I don't want Mark Rosewater to be fired. I want him to go do what he very clearly wants to do, and that is to be a political activist. Do not use our game for your political benefit. That's exactly what you're doing, Mark. And there are a lot of ways you can get involved, and you can be an activist that don't involve you fucking up our game. How about looking back at 
the absolute objective failure of iconic masters. How about the absolute colossal failure of Masters 25? As the head of research and development, you would think that might be the most important thing to you. I don't know. If it were me and it were my job to be in charge of research and development and, set and doing set design, I'd probably be pretty embarrassed. I probably wouldn't be shaming fellow other magic players, your customers publicly online. I would probably be putting my nose to the grindstone and figuring out why the hell those sets failed. But that's just me. Clearly your mind is somewhere else and you need to move on and stop fucking up our game. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to be notified the next time I upload a video, make sure you subscribe and take a moment to turn on notifications. If you want to support the cause of this channel, it survives because of the amazing generosity of those that choose to back me on Maker Support. The link is in the description and hopefully you'll consider backing today.